Hey, thank you. Thank you very much for clicking on this show. I'm happy. I get a view. I get money every time I get a view. That's great. And then if I give you guys really good stuff during the show, not only do I get that money, you start buying stuff for me and I get more money. So that makes me really happy. But it's a two-way street, right? It's a two-way street. I'm currently happy because you did all that stuff. What am I going to do for you? I'm going to drop some bombs! That's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to drop some bombs right now because guess what? The reason you clicked on this show is because you're trying to learn about out-of-state investing. You're trying to learn about cash flow investing, right? And the majority of you guys out there that are trying to invest for cash flow, you know what you're doing? And I bet this is you right now. You're probably sitting there on your couch, probably in your underwear, with Cheeto dust all over your damn face. And you're probably like, dude, dude, I live in California, and I clicked on this video because I got appreciation, but I want cash flow. Cash flow! That's probably you, I bet. Well, guess what? I'm dropping bombs. You can get cash flow and appreciation. Same time. Let's do it now. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS, and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. I'm James Wise. I help you get cash flow if you haven't figured that out, right? I help you invest in real estate, right? So if that sounds good and you haven't done so already, hit the subscribe button. That makes me happy. I get money when that happens. And we've already established I like money. Now, let me give you stuff you like. You like cash flow. And you probably left a place with a bunch of appreciation in exchange for that cash flow. That was probably your original plan. I'm going to give you more. I'm going to give you both. I want you to have your cake and eat it too, right? And specifically, who I'm talking to is Charles, out-of-state investor. Charles, you and me, we've been building you a portfolio based on cash flow and cash flow alone. It's great. You want it. But I know you want appreciation if you can get it, bro. Why not have them both? So this property that I got for you, Charles, is totally different Uh than some of the other properties we've been talking about. This property is going to come with the cash flow that you've been seeking, but I'm also going to get you some appreciation that you left behind from where you're from. And real quick before I do that, though, Charles, I just want everybody else who's watching Charles' show to know me and Charles are working together one-on-one. -on -one. I sent him this video months ago privately. So if you're watching it, the property, it's 6911 Franklin. I'm going to go over it at length. It's not available if you're not Charles and you're watching this, okay? Send it to him privately. I only publish these on Holton West TV for you guys all to learn and get on the bandwagon after the fact. So if you want to work with me in real time to do these deals, to get more, to get cash flow, to get cash flow without leaving behind appreciation, send my team an email. Give us your number. We'll see exactly what makes you tick, see how much money you're working with. You could also click the show notes below. That's all I got for you folks. The rest of it, it's all about you, Charles. Let's go to a quick break, and then let me break this deal down for you, teach you how you're going to get that cash flow and that appreciation and why. Two, please. Welcome back, folks. This, this property has me excited. What we're talking about today has me thrilled, right? People come to this market, to the Cleveland market, to work with me because they want cash flow, right? They can't get the cash flow in expensive places, right? California, Canada, New York, Oregon, right? Cash flow is tough, right? But traditionally... You invest in those markets for appreciation. And then markets like mine, like Cleveland, like Detroit, like Memphis, like Indianapolis. These are markets, Milwaukee, 
that are typically looked at as your cash flow markets. You don't go there for appreciation. You go there for cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, right? That's the correct assessment. I am not on the show telling anybody out there that Cleveland is like the appreciation <laughs> destination of the world. It's not, okay? It's not in the Sun Belt. It's in the Midwest, right? Traditionally speaking, you're not going to see major population growth in the Midwest. It's not how it works, right? Uh, so it will never be an appreciation market. That said, there are areas of the air of the Cleveland market that you can get appreciation, and I'm sure that's the same for all those other turnkey markets I mentioned. But like, I'm here in Cleveland, and I've sold 200 million dollars worth of real estate in Cleveland. So we're going to focus on what I'm an expert on in a deal right here that highlights all of that. Okay, I like this deal for many many reasons. 6911 Franklin Boulevard, Cleveland, 44102. It's been on the market for 34 days, and it's overpriced. It's overpriced, but we're going to work on that. 495K. This is in, like, one of the hottest friggin' neighborhoods you can get in Cleveland. Like, dude, this is where you want to be. We're doing, like, luxury Airbnbs, and we could possibly maybe one day turn this into an Airbnb, double up that return probably. Uh, but I, I prefer right now we're sticking with just single-family Airbnbs, right? And I don't want to turn it into a situation where we turn, like, one unit into an Airbnb and then long-term tenants and the rest. I think that would be problematic, but the idea is out there. But what we're talking about right here is Detroit Shoreway. This is, like, one of the most badass neighborhoods in Cleveland, right? When people talk about resurgence of Cleveland and they talk about the happening things, the gentrification, right? The neighborhoods, those are happening in the biggest neighborhoods in Cleveland. Edgewater, Detroit Shoreway, Ohio City, Tremont. One, two, three, four. Those are the four on the west side. And then if you cruise over to the east side, you also got some, some gnarly areas, right? University Circle, totally gnarly. And then you got, uh, I got to zoom in a little bit so you can see it, but Little Italy right next to University Circle. Like this, this whole little, all this jazz. I mean, University Circle it's got their own police force. I mean, that's, this is all good stuff, too, right? So if you're on the east side, it's those two. If you're on the west side, it's the ones I mentioned, right? And they're doing a lot of stuff in these neighborhoods to make gentrification happen, right? They're doing tax abatements on new construction, right? People are getting 15-year tax abatements, right? You buy a crummy house, tear it down, build a new house, you don't pay taxes on it for 15 years. They're forcing that stuff because they want this gentrification. So the city's, like, behind these neighborhoods. And because of that... We're seeing huge, huge increases in property values, right? You can buy single-family new construction homes in this neighborhood for like five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars right now, right? So if you're going to invest in Cleveland, you're doing so for the cash flow. But if you want to hop on an appreciation train, you need to be in a path of progress neighborhood. You need to be in an area like this where there's things popping, right? Ain't nobody building. New construction housing in the C-grade neighborhoods of Cleveland, right? If you guys watch my show for any period of time, we do a lot of Section 8 investing, okay? A lot of it, right? Like, old Brooklyn's a popular neighborhood. Like, all these, like, areas where you can buy duplexes for, like, 100K, right? Those are not areas right now that people are building new construction homes, right? These are those areas, right? So if you're really trying to pop upon the appreciation bandwagon, these are the proven neighborhoods. Now, with that said, though, Clark Fulton, the Metro Health area, I think that's going to be the next one because there's a lot of money coming into there. There's like billions of dollars going into there. Uh, Metro Health is doing a billion dollars. Transit Authority just did like another 60 million or something. So like, and that borders. It's just south of all these neighborhoods that have already like hit the the mark with five hundred thousand dollar houses, right? So areas like this, you already get huge rents, high quality tenants. That neighborhood, in my opinion, is the next one on the way, right? So here, what we have here, this is a very good opportunity. It's a four-unit apartment building. Four-unit apartment buildings are my favorite type of investment of all time because the financing is so butter! Ah! Financing, man. That's why I like real estate as an investment vehicle, dude. Like, first of all, like, I don't, like, love real estate, like, just in general of, like, I mean, I love real estate, but, like, I don't love it because, like, I love houses, and I'm just like, oh, my God, look at the architecture, and I want to, like, hug this fucking house like I care, right? now. I love real estate because it's an investment vehicle, right? But if I thought I could make more money 
uh, doing something else, I would do that, right? But with real estate, what really attracted me to real estate was you can work your day job and invest in real estate, right? You could do it part-time. You could do it passively. You could do it out of state, right? Hard to do a lot of other businesses like that. And then the financing. You put down a quarter. The bank puts down three quarters, and they let you take that for 30 years. Fixed interest, low interest, greatest financing in the world. But that's the thing with that financing. There's two downsides. It's residential financing where you do 25, bank does 75, and you get 30 years to pay it down. The two downsides are you only get 10 of those, number one. Number two, it's got to be on single-family homes, duplexes, triplexes, quads. So if you're putting the math together in your head, that means the quad is the biggest building you can get with the amazing financing. Once you go to a five-unit, your financing sucks. It's terrible. Uh, it's not good, right? I mean, it's not like the end of the world, right? But if you haven't exhausted 10 mortgages, there'd be no reason to do some crummy financing with like a five-year uh, call, like a 25-year AM variable rate interest rate and down payments with the way pricing is in 2021 of probably like 40 to 65% down. Like, screw that. 25% down 30 years. That's where it's at, baby. Right here. So, love that. And uh, what this is, this is a long-time landlord. Long time. He's owned this thing for a long, long, long time. Bought it before the neighborhood was popping. Before you could buy houses for half a million, six hundred, seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars. This dude bought it, ran it as like a low income property, right? For friggin' ever. Okay? He's got one vacant unit and then he's got a bunch of low income tenants in there. I'm gonna go over the market rents and the current rents here momentarily. This thing is something that he like ran back when this was like a C-grade neighborhood lower than that, right? Now it's basically an A-grade neighborhood, right? So I think this thing is going to even continue to project up based on all the government incentives uh, to get new houses built, right? All them yuppies that are coming in, right? So there's all your photos. But even though every photo you saw was empty, three of the units are currently occupied. And this dude, just old timer, ready to get out of the business, retire. <laughs> He's got month-to-month -month tenants and they're paying 550 950 and then he's got one in there till April paying 850 right now here's what market rents are right now today the two ones 1250 all day the one ones 1000 all day so 4500 54k right of that 54k i anticipate you spending approximately 23 uh, 275 to pay my team to manage this for you and all your normal expenses, fixed and variable expense estimates. You got to pay taxes, you got to pay insurance, people break stuff, people move out. Uh, evictions don't really happen in neighborhoods like this very often, but they do happen in the business, so we account for all that, right? So pure profit, 30725 Now, as far as price goes, I think he's still overpriced. This is definitely worth more than 500 k He's got it at 495 It's worth more than 500 k if you got the market rents, but dog. <laughs> you don't got the market rents, dude. You got like your your long time, old time tenants that uh, they're paying like, you know, rents that they should have been paying 30 years ago. Right. Like, come on, bro. You got somebody in there paying 550, dude. Like you could have rented this for 550 in like probably 1990. Right. Uh, so because of that, it's not worth over 500 today. And I don't think it's worth 495. I think we could pick it up. 450, 450. Now, one of the units is empty. So we're going to drop 20 G's into that right off the rip. Get somebody in there paying market rent. The other three tenants, I say we slowly work them up, right? The person paying five fifty, obviously that's the biggest one. Get them up. The people paying nine fifty and eight fifty, we don't need to like freak out, right? Shouldn't be in a rush to drop another twenty k in their units, right? Because you saw the pictures; those were not high end. We need them to be high end, right? So we want to get the empty unit. That's where we do. That's what we focus on first. We get that one renovated. We get that one ready to rock. Bring in max rent. And then the other ones we work on slowly. We want the money continually coming in, not going out. Don't get me wrong. I don't mind when you guys wire like twenty, forty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars out to Cleveland uh, for my team to do renovations. But like, you need to be paid yourself, right? So it makes no sense to remove income streams, right? Keep collecting that rent, and eventually we might be able to get them up to market rent just based on the location, because uh, of how nice it is and how desirable it is, without even having to do those turns, right? There's turnovers in the real estate business, right? And they're expensive. So you want to mitigate those as much as possible. Never create artificial turnovers, right? So assuming we can get the other three people up to market rent, which may or may not happen, right? It's possible. Uh, it's unlikely we get all three up to market rent without at least one turnover. It's also, in my opinion, unlikely we have to turn over all three of those units to get them to market rent. I think, you know, 
maybe like one or two will deflect or the other way, right? So if <coughs> we do do that though, right? We'd be looking at a total investment of 470K, 132 and a half out of your pocket. That's 112 for the DP, down payment for those of you at home who are not following my abbreviation there. DP, down payment, not double penetration. That's not what we talk about on this show, folks. No, that's another show. Anyway. 112500 for the down payment, 20 k in those upfront repairs. That should project you out to a 10.3% cash-on-cash return. 7 cap, making a clear cash flow after mortgage, 13649 You're paying 17900 and I just crossed off that number by circling it. I don't know. You're paying almost eighteen grand to the bank, but that's really going back in your pocket, right? So that's like equity. Right, so you got your cash flow, you got your equity, you got three hundred thirty-seven thousand dollars of a loan that them tenants are paying for you, plus the cash flow, plus you're in one of the hottest neighborhoods in town. Which, in my opinion, if anything's appreciating, it's the area where they're tearing down low-income housing at a rapid pace and building freaking five, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars single-family homes, folks. Do the math. You're insane. If you don't pick this up, not to mention, it's the biggest building you can get with the best financing there is. And if I can get you that $45,000 discount off the list price, we in the money. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.